After you've scanned your music into PDF format, the next step is to load the files in the next page. In this tutorial, we're going to look at two ways to do that. One is iTunes Sync and the other is Dropbox. Now, if you need help with scanning, you might want to check out our other tutorial video that shows you the step-by-step -step process on how to do that. So the first thing we're going to look at is iTunes Sync. When you first get next, next page and start it up, you get this message, your song list is empty and use iTunes or Dropbox to load your music PDF files and that's what we're going to do. So over here to the left you see I've got iTunes running on the Mac. Uh, my iPad's not attached yet. Now you can do that two ways. One is with the uh, USB cable that comes with your iPad or you could also attach it using Wi-Fi sync. Uh, but for our purposes here I'm going to use a USB cable and when it does get connected you will see the word iPad appear here on the menu bar. So I'm going to reach around and plug in. And iTunes now sees the iPad. It'll go through its little syncing process, which won't take very long. Um, and then what happens is as when we click on iPad, we get a menu bar. And what we're looking for is the word apps. That's going to take us to a screen where we can not only see what apps are on the iPad, but more interestingly, we can go to this file sharing section. And what uh, this is for is apps like NextPage can be written so that uh, documents can be shared back and forth between your PC and the iPad. So you'll look for NextPage in the list and click it. Then the NextPage document sharing window is open. What you'll see here, these things that are already here have to do with the operation of the next page. You don't have to worry about what they are. They're, they're not important to what we're doing here. At this point, we can just drag and drop our PDFs right in this window and then we're going to click the sync button. So up here at the top you see I've got a finder window. I've got some PDFs all ready to go. I'm going to take the Brahms number first and drag and drop that in. And then I'm going to click sync and it should go pretty quickly. And now when I tap the songs list we've got a, the uh, song in next page and we can click and add it to a set list. And there it is. Now you can drag and drop more than one at a time. I'm going to take three of these and drop them in. And there is another way you can do uh, the sync with the button. You can also use the refresh button that is on the song list menu up here in the upper left and that will essentially accomplish the same thing. Um, another question we get a lot, it's not always obvious, but how do I get songs out of next page if I want to? And to do that you can click the edit button or tap the edit button and it's just uh, almost like any other oops wrong button there it's almost like any other table type app you have insofar as deleting things works just like mail or any other uh, calendar apps or things like that where you've got a table pretty easy and at that point it's removed and if you noticed while I'll do it again so you can look over here in iTunes you can actually watch it go away um, yeah there it went All right. So that's iTunes Sync. Now the second way uh, we're going to look at is Dropbox. Dropbox is an online uh, file sharing service. It's made to uh, sync files between your Mac, your PC, your mobile phone, your, your tablets, and uh, pretty much let you have access to your files on any device you own. You can get a free account. I believe the limit on the free account is 2 gig uh, gigs of storage, which is plenty, especially for music. Um, I'm going to assume for our demo here that Dropbox, a Dropbox account has already been created. We're going to use mine for this demo and uh, that there are already some music PDFs there. So I'm going to tap on Dropbox and the first time you do this after, when, after NextPage is installed, Dropbox is going to want you to grant permission uh, for NextPage to see your files. You only have to do this one time unless you deliberately unlink it. All right, we'll get the authorizing and we're back in next page. Now, as we go back to the Dropbox the second time, we see an actual listing of my different files and folders. And we are going to go to my classical folder. And you'll see a couple of things are going on here. If you, if you look very carefully, what you see here in this list actually happens to be the same list I used up here from my Mac. In fact, this is a Dropbox folder open on my Mac. And I do that for, for a couple of reasons. One, to demonstrate to you that the files can be in both places. 
um, and they're exactly the same thing. The other thing is, notice that some of these have dark black titles and some are in gray. The ones that are in gray are already on next page. Those are the ones we loaded over here using iTunes Sync. So this is a little visual indication <clears throat> that next page gives you so that you don't you know waste time uh, downloading something that's already on your iPad. We show you the size here. This is a six megabyte file, which is a pretty big scan. And this is something much smaller. This was probably actually created by Finale or something that could create uh, very small native PDF files. At any rate, if there's a song here that you want to put on your iPad, it's a simple matter of clicking on it or tapping on it. And we'll get a little progress bar or pie chart, I should say. Uh, we can only do one at a time. That's uh, if you try to tap on any of the others, it will just ignore you while that one is, is downloading. And as soon as it's finished, the progress indicator will go away. Now, if we go back to our song list, we'll see it at the top. Let's go back over and it will always refresh. Let's do the WC number, much smaller file. You can see it's coming down much quicker. And we'll go back to the songs menu and there it is. Now, for, for some reason, you wouldn't see it. You can again use the refresh button up here in the upper left of the song. Um, a title bar. Uh, normally you don't have to do that, but when in, if, you, if you do have a situation where something's not showing up, that's always a good thing to, uh, to try as a, as a last resort. All right, so those are the basic two methods for getting uh, your song files in the next page. Most people will eventually go to Dropbox because it's so easy and convenient. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can always get to your songs and download something, whether you're at rehearsal or your performance day and the song list gets changed up and you need something in a hurry. Um, there is one more way to get a song in the next page, and we'll probably show you that in another video, which is as an email attachment. Just, But just to briefly tell you how that works. If someone sends you a, uh, an email with... A PDF in it that you'd like to open the next page. It is a simple matter of holding down on the attachment and then a menu will pop up and it'll say open in and then you can pick next page out of that list and what will happen is it will automatically be added to uh, the song list for you in next page and you can add it to a set list just like you did here as you would any other song. So that's all for this video. As always if you have any questions please feel free to contact us. Uh, via email at support at onstagetechnologies.com. Thanks for watching.